And so what do we need to do about this? What's the correct response in dealing with online harassment? The standard answer is often something like, you know, don't engage, don't feed the trolls. Um, but that's not always possible. Sometimes journalists do have to wade into the fray in order to protect their byline or perhaps to correct a misconception in their reporting. There are all kinds of reasons why we might want to. We might also want to engage in order to find out more about sources and to kind of harvest public opinion. So I think that the blanket suggestion that you should just you know, avoid any kind of contact isn't really good enough. So perhaps the bigger question is, when we're thinking about not feeding trolls, is the question about what does it take to prevent those hostile voices from gaining traction in one's own head? In other words, how do you stop feeding the trolls in your head rather than feeding the trolls out there in the real world? Um, the first line of defense, I'd suggest, is knowing thy troll. Okay, so it's being clear about what the threat is. And that there are a whole group of people um, who comment negatively online, and some of them really aren't trolls at all. They're more like confused members of the public who perhaps lack an understanding of civility and why it's possible online. These are people who wouldn't dream of saying the things that they write in comments to a journalist's face. And often they don't understand the impact it can have. And so there's a very important role that news organizations uh, need to play in educating their audiences and finding ways of creating more civil space for dialogue. In fact, probably in some ways, this is the kind of major challenge uh, for news organizations, is trying to encourage greater civility amongst the audience. But without just pushing people away and saying, we don't like your views, get out of our online spaces. It's much better to say, we want to hear about your views and we want to understand them better, but these are the conditions around which we have a conversation. And you can see that this has become a general trend, actually. It's something that most newspapers have started to do. They've found more and more agile ways of moderating content and trying to get a better level of conversation uh, online. So there are those trolls, people who aren't really trolls at all, um, they're just kind of angry people. And given this current political situation in the world with the rise in populism and that all kinds of people who've been drawn in to behaving like uh, nefarious trolls, and perhaps we can kind of wean them, wean them away. But then there are the, you know, the dead hard ideologues um, who are pushing political messages. And some of those people are amateurs, and others are professionals who are employed in state-run troll factories. Now, in this kind of category of troll, there's not really any point in trying to directly change their minds or kind of feeling that you can do because they're born on a mission. In fact, sometimes these aren't, people aren't trolls at all, they're robots. And so, you know, you wouldn't really try and take things personally if you're being attacked by a robot kind of thing. Um, and so if you're being attacked by a robot, it really isn't personal. It's really not about... Um, the identity of the journalist. And the third category of trolls that we have to think about are the, what I call true nefarious trolls. And these are people who um, fall under what's called the dark tetrad of personality disorders. So that's Machiavellianism, narcissism, narcissism, sadism, and psychopathology. And there's really no point in engaging those folk directly or expecting to kind of get good answers out of them. That's not something that we can do as journalists.